This is Canon Rebel T8i, or the 850D, depending on what country you're in. And I know that Canon camera names are pretty confusing, but this is Canon's latest DSLR. And in terms of its features and its pricing, it sits somewhere in between the base model, the SL3, and the 90D, their new flagship APS-C camera. I know that technically they're flagship APS-C camera is still the 7D Mark II, but that camera is like six years old now, and it's actually about the same price as the 90D brand new right now. The T8i is $750 US, and if you get the 18 to 55 kit lens with it, it's $900. Do not pay $150 for that lens. I'm not really sure why Canon priced the kit like this, but that lens is definitely not worth $150. If you want to get it, you can find one used on eBay for like 50 bucks, or you can just save the money and get a different lens. You're welcome. This is an interesting camera because if I'm completely honest, this is not the most exciting camera to see in 2020. And this is just a very minor upgrade of a consumer level DSLR. But as reviewers, we often forget what that means, don't we? Consumer level DSLR. And we always like to talk about all the expensive cameras like the A9s or the R5s. But, you know, probably less than 1% of people who watch these videos actually end up buying those cameras. But something like this, on the other hand, um, the T7i, the predecessor of this camera, um, was and still is one of the best selling cameras on Amazon for a while. No matter how many keyboard photographers complain about specs and image quality, let's face it, all cameras are pretty good nowadays. Comparing the image quality between cameras today is actually kind of like comparing different cars and deciding which one can get to the grocery store faster. This is the Toyota Corollas and Honda Civics of cameras, and it may not be as exciting as a Tesla or a Ferrari, but it's more than good enough for 90% of the people and it will continue to serve new photographers for many more years to come. If you stumbled upon this video while trying to figure out which new Canon camera to buy, like I said, I know that Canon camera names can be pretty confusing, so let me just try to clear things up a bit for you while going over the specs. Canon currently sells the SL3 for $500 US and the T8i for $750. The T8i has slightly bigger body with more buttons, so as you become more advanced with your photography, it will be a little easier for you to change the camera settings as you need, instead of just letting the camera do the work for you. Some might also find that it's more comfortable to hold than smaller cameras. There's no difference in image quality between these two cameras, and they both have 24 megapixel sensors. Even the video specs are pretty much the same, except the SL3 cannot shoot 1080p videos in 24 frames per second. If that doesn't mean anything to you, you can probably ignore it. They both can shoot 4K videos, but in 4K they both lose dual pixel autofocus, which is especially useful for tracking faces while shooting videos like this, and their 4K videos are heavily cropped so you'll need a wider lens. They both have ISO sensitivity of 100 to 25,600, same maximum shutter speed of 1 4,000th of a second, which is pretty typical for consumer level cameras, and Probably the biggest difference between the two other than the body design are shooting frame rates and the autofocus system. The SL3 has a 9-point autofocus system with one of them being cross-type, which is definitely usable but quite primitive if you ask me, and can shoot up to 5 frames per second. But the T8i has 45-point all-cross-type autofocus system, which is much better for tracking moving subjects and composing your shots and can shoot up to 7 frames per second instead of 5 or 7.5 frames per second with the live view. If you spend $400 or $450 more, you can get a 90D, which again has a slightly bigger and more durable body, a 32 megapixel sensor instead of 24, and can shoot up to 10 frames per second, and uncropped 4K video with great autofocus. So the T8i is probably a good compromise for a lot of people. It's not the cheapest camera that you might quickly grow out of, and it's not too expensive, and it doesn't have too many features that you may not need right now now. It's like when you pick a wine at a restaurant, there's a saying that you should always go for the second cheapest wine because that's how you get the best value. I've owned an SL2 and the 80D before and it's actually my first time trying the mid-level Canon crop sensor DSLR 
and I've had it for about a week now and in person it's basically what I just described. It feels a bit nicer and bigger than the SL2 or the SL3 but compared to the 80D or the 90D uh, it can feel a bit plasticky. This is 515 grams which is 66 grams heavier than the SL3 but this is 186 grams lighter than the 90D. To put it nicely, it's nice that it's not too heavy and bulky, but if you've used a more expensive camera before, this can feel a bit cheap and brittle. But one thing that Canon's always done so well on all of their cameras is that even though this is a smaller camera that I'm used to, this being a DSLR, the grip is very comfortable and all the buttons are perfectly placed. The text and icons are easy to read. The ISO button at the top has a little dot on it so you know what you're pressing without taking your eye off the viewfinder. So after basically about 10 minutes of shooting with this, I could pretty much work this camera with my eyes closed. About the only complaint I have about the design is the back dial right here which I use to uh, adjust the aperture. It is quite small and it also doubles as buttons so as I'm adjusting the aperture I always end up accidentally pressing these buttons so the autofocus mode selection or the drive mode selection mode might pop up so that's kind of annoying but um, I got used to it after a while and I just learned to be a little more gentle with it. So obviously if you want a smaller camera mirrorless is the way to go but every time I come back to a DSLR there's that sense of familiarity and it fits in my hand so nicely and it's like finding the right clothes or shoes that fit me properly. And here's another benefit of using a DSLR instead of a mirrorless camera and that is the battery life. It uses the LPE17 battery which is the same battery the M6 Mark II uses but the M6 Mark II is rated at 305 shots per battery and the T8i is rated at 1240 shots per battery because it doesn't have to power the electronic viewfinder or the rear LCD screen all the time, it's getting four times more battery life with the same battery. In terms of image quality, I believe this is still the same 24 megapixel sensor that they used on the M50, again, which is not the most exciting, but it still has the Canon colors that we all know and love, and the colors look natural and contrasty, but not overly saturated, and the files look great out of the camera and don't need much adjustments. In low light, like most crop sensor cameras, files are pretty decent up to about ISO 6400, and at 12,800 it gets more noisy, but it's actually not too bad. I saw the biggest difference going from 12,800 to 25,600. At 25,600 it develops this greenish tint and you also lose a lot of details in the shadows. Canon cameras are not really known for their dynamic range but that obviously depends on the way you shoot and how you edit your photos and how much wiggle room you need for your mistakes. It actually does a decent job recovering the shadows but if you push it more than 3 or 4 stops you will notice the similar green tint that we saw in high ISO images. Recovering the highlights on the other hand it didn't do as well. I first noticed this on the 80D and it has been the pattern with most Canon cameras that I've tested over the years. So if you're going to be editing your photos a lot, it's usually better to slightly underexpose your images rather than shooting for the shadows if you want the most dynamic range. The autofocus, again, it may not be the best in the world, but it's still a lot better than the SL3s and it just works. The tracking is quite responsive and there's no way you can do this with an SL3 and the dual pixel autofocus is so good nowadays you can pretty much use this camera like a mirrorless if you really wanted to. So to sum it all up, um, yeah, this camera may not be as exciting and advanced as the 90D and this may not have the most cutting edge video specs like some other cameras on the market, but if you don't care about all that and if you just want to take good photos, you know, this is the camera that simply just works. This is not a camera that I would have bought based on what I saw on the spec sheet, but after shooting with it for a week now, I'm just thinking, why would I need anything else? I guess pretty much the only problem with this camera right now is the fact that Canon's had so many cameras in this price range and there are also a lot of older models that are on sale right now like the 77D or the T7i. So if you're not the type of person who needs to have the latest and greatest of everything, those cameras are still pretty good and if I'm completely honest, 
they're not that different from this camera. So if you're in the market for a new DSLR for between $500 to $1,000 and you don't necessarily need all the video specs and more advanced features like on a 90D, then I would highly recommend the T8i. So that's for me today. Thank you for watching. And if you have any more questions about this camera, just leave a comment down below and I'll try to get to them all. And I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.